morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we wanna welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's gonna be something that's gonna be shared that's gonna be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna say welcome to everybody. All of our Spirit of Fire folk, we love you. We appreciate you even coming on our virtual experience. We want you at this time to go ahead and share this video, share it with someone, invite someone to come in with you today. Some of you may be on platforms where you can't share right now, maybe on the YouTube channels, um, looking at on your TV or something. But listen, if you can share, invite somebody to tune in. We're continuing on our series dealing with prayer, the power of prayer, the posture of prayer, the position of prayer, the promotion of prayer of what God has for us. And so we want to make sure that we um, are articulating this word in a way that it's getting in your spirit. I pray that it's getting into you. Um, last week, um, I started dealing with pleading your case before God. And so we're going to continue with that today. But before I do that, I want to welcome all of our first timers. If this is your very first time tuning in, we just want to say welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We love and appreciate you. There are many other platforms you could be watching right now, but you're here today. And so we thank God we don't take it lightly that you stop. And I want you to stay here. Stay tuned in. Don't just flip past. I want you to stay tuned in and locked in because there may be answers right now that God is going to have for you concerning your life, concerning your prayer life, how to pray, how to get results. I believe that there's one answer to prayer that God has for us, and that's yes and amen. And so we want to talk about what is it, the components of prayer, things that we need to be mindful of, how we position ourselves to get answered prayers. And so we want to deal with that today. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We're going to jump into this today. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation, knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of your word. We do approach your word reverently. We thank you right now that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened today. I pray that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it. We also cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the great teacher. You are the great counselor and the great comforter, the one ready to give us peace. I thank you and I pull on this anointing, this anointing to teach and to share and to train and to develop. And I thank you, Father, right now for answers being given to your people, signs, wonders, and miracles that are being wrought in the name of Jesus, and that, Father, you confirm your word with signs following. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, all right. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verses 25 through 26. And as I was just meditating and just thinking, um, just dealing with uh, what is it, how I need to present, what I need to present. One of the things that I just believe that the Spirit of God just dropped in me was to just begin to pour out and begin to share out of my heart by His Word, but also even experience and experience in His Word, experience in prayer. Sometimes I may bring up different scenarios, things that I've gone through personally, things that I've experienced, experiences that I've heard from others. Um, but the, the foundation of what we do is going to be the word of God. This ministry is built off the word and prayer and also our giving. And so we thank God for that. We are praying people and we love prayer. We believe in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. We know that prayer changes everything. And that once we understand how to rightfully pray according to the word of God, we can expect answers to our prayers. Now I may, as I'm dealing with this, start dealing with some of those questions as to, you know, some people say that God's answers to prayer are yes, no, and not now. But God's prayer, according to the book, according to his word, is yes and amen. And we may talk about those delays, the, the, the moment from I believe I receive it to there it is. And the posture that you and I need to have while we're believing and trusting God in the midst of our praying. And so, because I know many of you are praying about situations, you're praying about things, and you're asking God, God, when is this answer going to come? When is this thing going to show up? I'm becoming weary and well-doing, and I'm trying to do it the right way, um, and I'm, I'm trying to follow the instructions, but it just doesn't seem like it's working. 
the first thing you need to remember, the first thing is, is to have your faith intact because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Anytime you come to God, you must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And so you got to understand that when you're coming to God in prayer, you got to make sure you check your believing even before coming to him. Sometimes people just try it to see if it works. And then what happens is you're going to God in hope, but not in faith. Hope is a goal setter. Hope is an earnest expectation of good, but it's not faith. Faith now says, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that comes by the word. So the evidence that I have that I can go before God about this particular situation is his word. And so that builds my faith up to now receive what I'm hoping for. Hope is usually in the, in the future. It's always, you know, one day this may happen or I'm believing for this thing. But faith says, no, I believe I receive it now. So the moment I pray, I believe I receive it. Now, I dealt with that a couple of weeks ago, even dealing with these steps where prayer, answer prayer is concerned. And one of the things is deciding what you want. But even when you pray, you got to believe that you receive when you pray. Believe that you receive it. And when you believe that you receive it, you're going to start acting like you already have it. Because it, it's just like if I ask somebody for a bottle of water and they give it to me, the proper response after they give it to me is thank you. And so now if we believe that we receive what we already prayed for, then they're on according of uh, uh, pertaining to that thing that we praying about, that we prayed about. We're going to continuously thank God until we see the manifestation of it. So if I'm believing I receive the new home, the new promotion, whatever. Now, the moment that I've asked him, he heard me if I went according to his will. And we've dealt with that. So I do recommend you go back and look at some previous messages when I start dealing with those things. When we get the promises of God, we go in, in prayer to him. We believe we receive it. And now we just begin to thank him for it. OK. And so now I want you to begin to hold that stance. I want you to begin to hold that ground of being thankful because what happens is Satan will try to come in and try to discourage you that what you prayed for, God either didn't hear it or it ain't come in the past. But now even the first John 5, 14 to 15 says, but this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What's his will? His will is his word. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. OK, so once we get God's word, that's his will. So if we ask anything according to his will. OK, let me say it like this. If we ask anything according to his word so that we know this is his will because it's his word. He promised this to me. So now I watch this. He says this. Whatsoever um, we shall ask, we believe. Watch this. Let me go back because I'm. He said, This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, watch this. Whatsoever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. How do I know I have the petition I desire of him? Because I know that I went to him according to his will. That's my confidence. That's what keeps me. That's what keeps me when. On the outside, it doesn't look like he answered it, but I said, I know he answered it. Number one, I know he heard it because I went to him according to the rules he established. I went to him according to the pattern that he gave me. And so because of that, I know that God heard me. And because I know that he heard me, I know I believe I received whatever it is that he gave that I was petitioning from him. OK, so even going back and I think I did this. I don't know if this was last week or before in the book of Daniel, when Daniel began to fast and pray and seeking God, when the angel showed up on the 21st day, he said this. He says, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, I was released and I came. He said that. I, he said this. I came for your words. So when Daniel started praying and seeking God, the angel was released immediately the first day he prayed. But he said this, I had resistance in the spirit realm because of the prince of Persia was withholding me. Then Michael, the archangel, came to assist me and to help me to come. And he says, now I'm here to now answer this thing and to tell you what's about to happen. So the very moment 
that he prayed, the answer was released. But there were spiritual forces at work behind the scenes trying to stop the answer from coming forward. And so now you got to understand. But watch this. He had heavenly assistance. He had help. He had he didn't know any of this was going on behind the scenes in the spirit world. He didn't know all of this until it was revealed to him. And so I want to encourage somebody that's out there that you've been praying for stuff and you've been believing for stuff. And sometimes you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Even when Jesus spoke to the fig tree in the book of Mark 11, he spoke to the fig tree. The Bible says in another translation in the book of Matthew that immediately it was dried up from the root. The moment Jesus spoke, power went into operation. The words were working. Everything, watch this, because we couldn't see it, they couldn't see it. And watch this, the Bible says the disciples heard him. And they went on into Bethany, I believe it was. And when they came back the next morning, Peter recalled what Jesus said and said, that tree that you spoke to and that you cursed is withered up. It's dead. Then Jesus began to explain to them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith that whatsoever things that you shall say, Doubt not in your heart, but believe. Don't doubt in your heart. Now, doubt may come to your head, but don't let it get into your heart. What do you mean by that? Even though the thoughts may come for you to doubt what it is you're praying about, your heart can still say, wait a minute, uh uh-uh, God promised me in this word. God promised me, so I believe this. And watch this. You choose to believe. You choose to believe. And I think that's a word that's, that's, that's been ringing in me to share more and more. You can choose to to believe. I make a decision. In other words, let me use another word. I accept what you say, God. I accept it as truth. I believe it. So now I believe I received this thing, so I have it now. So now my attitude is going to be, I'm going to walk and talk and think like it's already done. Now, thoughts come to your head, that don't work. God don't love you. Ain't nothing happening. You don't feel any different, look any different. Ain't nothing changed. See, it don't work. And that's what Satan tries to bring. That's the wiles, the tactics, the schemes of the devil that he tries to come. And now, like he did with Peter, and Jesus said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. In other words, he wants to play mind games on you. But then Jesus said it like this. I pray that your faith fail you not. Even in the process of the sifting, when Satan is coming and playing games with your head, Watch this. Jesus is forever making intercession for us. And then, too, he uses us to intercede on behalf of others when they're coming under attack. And now he wants us to now come because we talked about this with intercession. And we come on behalf of that individual and pray a disruption in the attack of the enemy against them. And so, listen, your prayers are not in vain. What you've been praying, God been using. I felt something here. Listen, God been using you to pray. And listen, your prayers are not in vain. Just because the person ain't acting like stuff is changing, God is already working on their heart. Things are already set in motion. He is already putting people in positions and in places to assist and to help. And God just wants you to rest. You don't have to be stressed out about it. You don't have to be worried about it. You can walk in peace. Jesus said, had a God kind of faith. What's other things you should say? Doubt not in your heart, but believe, but believe, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. You shall have, you shall have, you shall have whatsoever you say. In other words, set the thermostat. It's almost like when you set a thermostat in your home, if you put it on the desired temperature that you want, all things working properly, as long as everything is intact, everything is working, the thermostat and the system that it's sending a signal to, If you set it on a certain temperature, it's designed to reach that temperature. It won't go above it. And even if it drops below it, it kicks back in automatically. When you set it on auto, it kicks back in automatically to keep a regulated temperature that you set. Oh, that's good. He says, if you keep speaking, you set the thermostat, be disciplined, be automatic in what you speak according to my word, and it will begin to set if you don't change that temperature. And you you know how it is. You set a temperature and somebody all of a sudden it gets hotter than what you said. It's like, why is it so hot? And then you go look at the thermostat and somebody pushed it up above what you currently said. It's like, who touched this thing? Because now it's too hot. Watch this. As long as you don't touch it. 
is designed to reach the goal. Likewise, if you don't change your confession, that what you speak is going to remain that desired temperature and you got to let it work. You got to set it and let it work. Let the word do the work. God said, my word is incorruptible seed. It'll always produce. You have to set it. You have to say, hey, listen, I'll use myself. All right, Mike, you got to set this thing. You can't one minute be double minded. You can't go back and forth with this thing. If you're going to set it, set it. If you're going to reach it, reach it. Don't one minute speak one thing, then another minute speak another thing. He says, watch this. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and let not that man think he shall receive anything. The reason why you won't receive anything is because you don't settle on anything. Ooh, geez, that's it. <laughs> the reason why you won't receive anything because you don't settle on anything and lock in on anything. Lock in on what it is you believe in for. He says, lock in on it. Lock in on that promise. Lock in on the fact that I already got it. Lock in on the fact that I'm already healed. Lock in on the fact that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guards my heart and my mind. Lock in on it. And I don't care. Watch this. Everything has to now come into alignment and agreement with it. When you speak, remember, you've been created in God's image and after his likeness. And when you declare, when you speak, oh, watch this. The, the universe, which is God's creation, got to go to work for you. See, y'all, listen, there are many people that's praying to the universe. Like, what kind of foolishness? The scripture talks about that. You worshiping the creation more than the creator. Uh-uh, we don't worship the creation. We worship the creator, and the creation serves us. So when I speak, molecules got to come together. Matter got to come together. Everything has to go into motion. Everything, your vibrations and all that stuff you talking. Everything, yeah, some of y'all vibrating too much. And then all of a sudden now, you got to start speaking. You got to start listening. You got to listen. God will give you the blueprint when you get into his word. And it sets your mind on the things above. It gets you the image. And once you get the image, you got to start building with your words. And God is saying it's time for you to build a new life now. It's time for you to arise and shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? Because your light has come. Now, there's one in my notes right here. I'm just, I'm just starting. This is kind of the foundation. But he says, I, I want you... I want you to begin to speak. I want you to begin to declare. Some of you are requesting things. He says this. It's already been set. It's already, you've already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And it's already my will. It's already been finished. It's already been sealed. It's already been done. And what I need for you to do is to call in what's already done. Call in the fact that I'm healed. Call in the fact that I'm already blessed. Call in whatever it is that I need. Listen, it is already done. And he says, you're asking me for something I've already given you. You just now need to enforce it by the, watch this, through the authority of the name of Jesus. That name that's above every name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. That's a name. He said this, that's above every name. Cancer is a name. Diabetes is a name. Depression is a name. Listen, I don't care what it is. Every name got to bow to the name. That's above every name. And he's given us a power of attorney or authority to use that name as his representative. So now God, instead of, it's going, God is, he wants us to get to the point. We can tell him, God, I got this because you've already delegated it unto me. So I'm going to enforce what you've already given me. I'm going to have to, now it's like, you ain't got to do it for me because you've already done it. You seated, Jesus seated. It's already done. It's already finished. He's my intercessor. He's my high priest forever making intercession for me. He's already, watch this. He's all, I'm, I'm, I got to slow down because it's running through me. He's already shed his blood and he's at the mercy seat and is saying, you got to look over Mike. You got to watch over him. You got to honor your word because why? He's coming to you, Father, in my name. And because of that, you are obligated. Lord Jesus, you are obligated through the covenant that you cut. Jesus. He says, you are, man, go. I was looking over this the other day, dealing with the blood covenant and understanding that the, even when God cut covenant with Abram and he, he slipped, um, Abram did the, the sacrimonial, um, the sacrifice and he cut the covenant animal in half. And then there were two pieces and then there was blood running through the alleyway. And then there was a smoking lamp. 
And watch this. As God began to cut covenant with Abram, Abram was asleep and God walked through the pieces and declared unto him what he was going to do for him. Watch this. You got to understand this. This is what this is what's mind blowing about it. And when you're cutting covenant, even under old covenant, there had to be two or more parties. But each party would declare what they would do. When God cut a blood covenant with Abram, Abram didn't have to say nothing. God was the one promising everything. He didn't say Abram had to do in order for him to do this. He says this, I will, I will, I will, I will. And all you got to do, Abram, is believe. See, y'all, y'all, I'm going to have to read. I'm going to have to reteach this thing. You got to understand God's grace. See, he made it. He already made it. He sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. He already showed us who is the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment of the purchased possession. He already gave us his spirit. When he gave us his spirit, he gave us himself. Not only did he give us the name, in other words, authority to use the name of Jesus, but he also gave us the power of the Holy Spirit to enforce the authority that he has already given us. He's given us authority and ability. And so now we got to tap into that and be consistent in what we speak, consistent in what we believe. I want y'all, I hope y'all hearing me. I feel it flowing. I feel it flowing. And then you got to rise strong. You got to believe it. 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 Huh? You got to believe it. In the name of Jesus, I am the heal, protecting my health from sickness and disease. I rest in that. I walk in peace. This too shall pass. Your word promises that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You said, in every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I'll condemn it. I'll condemn it. He didn't say he would condemn it. He said, you'll condemn it and show it to be in the wrong. You just hold your stand. Some of you trying to defend your own honor. And God says, you need to shut up and let me fight the battle for you. Let your character speak for you. You ain't got to defend yourself. People believe what they want to believe. And you wasting energy and time trying to convince somebody that you've changed. Just let your light shine. They'll see it. That's for somebody right there. You ain't got to keep convincing people. God will give you a new crew. I know you're trying to reestablish with the old. Maybe he disconnected you from them. Okay, whoever that is. Okay, amen. Now, watch this. <laughs> now, I done laid that foundation. This comes with, we talked about this. Well, let me go to Isaiah. I'll just recap this from last week. Isaiah 43, 25 through 26. He says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. He said, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So he says, I blot out your transgressions for my own sake. In other words, he's doing that so that he won't hold us accountable, because if he holds us accountable of being guilty, then punishment must ensue. So he says, no, I'm going to send a sacrifice. Jesus says, here am I, send me. So he came, he received the penalty for our sins so that now he took on our judgment. He took on the judgment of mankind when he took on the sins of the world. He didn't just take on the sins of Christians. He took on the sins of unbelievers as well. All of us were unbelievers until we believed. It's already done. All you have to do is believe what he's already done. And now it's applied to your account. You see what I'm saying? So it's almost like you got an inheritance, but you fail to go and to let people know I got a right to this. Sinners and saints alike. Sinners and saints alike. This is by, by grace are we saved through faith, not of works. See, it's not our own works. This is why he says, I had to blot out your transgressions so now I can just bless you. Let's, 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 let's keep going. Let's keep, oh, Jesus. Oh, man, this, this is, I'm telling you, the more I'm studying it, the more I'm meditating on it, the more embedded is getting in me. And the fact that, wait a minute, I don't have to perform for God. I need to walk by faith and believe. But watch this. My believing will cause a response through me because faith without works is dead. And so corresponding action will ensue. Why? Because I believe. If I believe I'm righteous, I'll pray with boldness. 
If I believe I'm righteous, I'll walk in confidence. If I believe I'm righteous and I know he has already provided this stuff for me, why should I fear knowing that provision is already available? But now the question is, God, what is it? Now I can ask him, what is it that you would have for me to do in this situation? Because you also said that if I lack not on uh, wisdom in this situation, all I have to do is ask you. But watch this. There's a stipulation. I must believe I receive when I ask for this wisdom. Because he says, watch this. If you don't believe that God is going to grant it, you'll become stagnant, double minded. You'll become unsure of yourself. And so sometimes this is one thing I believe Spirit of God spoke to me earlier. It's like be confident in what I told you to do. You already know the answer. Now walk in it. Don't 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 shy away from the wisdom that's already upon you, because if you ask for me to, to put on you the spirit of wisdom, you ought to expect that the spirit of wisdom will be in operation even when decisions need to be made. And sometimes this is what happened. Sometimes I'd be hesitant because I didn't want to make the wrong decision. And as long as I knew it was within God's will, then I knew, OK, it was OK to make this decision, because then also this was another thing. I didn't want to be accused of being um, lacking faith. Because God gave me wisdom. And sometimes God, listen, Satan will use your heart to do right against you to cause you to be stagnant. There's wisdom that's already there. And now it's not fear. It's just God's wisdom showing you in this particular situation, do this and watch what begins to happen. You can make a decision and still walk by. Watch this. When I say walk by faith, let me give you an example because I don't want to confuse you. It's almost like, when, if, say if you need to make a purchase. Just from a simple, logical standpoint, if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep will be your downfall financially. I'll say that once, one more time. If your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep will be your downfall. In other words, you got more going out than coming in. Practicalness, wisdom would say, okay, stop overspending. So, okay, so this is what we call budgeting. Some people don't believe in it. Some people speak against it. It's like, wait a minute, but you got to get to a place. Budgeting is just simply you telling your money where it's going and you see where it's going. Okay. Now watch this. A need shows up that, okay, you need a vehicle, you need a home or whatever. You look at what you're bringing in and what's going out from a practical sense. Hear me out. If you see what you got coming in, stable money, stable bills. Okay, so that way you know I can handle this amount because I know what I got coming in monthly. But we understand in the kingdom of God's system, and watch this, that even my salary doesn't dictate my income. So even though I'm, a, I'm, I'm believing, so now I don't have to be regulated to just believing for what I currently make, above what I currently make. I can still believe for a house, but watch this. One of two things usually ends up happening that that's above my pay or what I'm bringing in currently. One of two things usually has to happen. Either the price of the thing you believe for has to come down to fit with you where you are or what you bringing in has to be raised up to fit where it is. Usually one of two things, and sometimes they can be simultaneous. God can elevate and bring down. That means you can get the best of something at a low cost. And then that way, too, because God doesn't want you to have stress, struggle or strain. But now you got to stop. Now, some people may say, well, I have faith to possess it and then believe God to pay for it over time. OK, if that's where your faith is, this is the point I want you to hear. God meets you where your faith is, but you got to be honest as to where your faith is. And I've been there in the past doing something and making purchases that. I knew in my heart it wasn't the right thing to do, but I felt pressure to, upon myself. I ain't going to say pressure from nobody else. It was just pressure I put upon myself to provide something that I knew we couldn't handle. And then in all of the cases, something ended up happening where we ended up losing what we had. But God is saying this. The way you do it now is, you find out what my word says concerning giving, receiving, faith, how to believe. And now watch this. I know where I currently am, but I can release my faith for greater. 
So I get scriptures concerning what it is I'm believing for, still practicing sound biblical stewardship and say, watch this. I'll begin to sow for where I'm going. I'm a sow for where I go. So now I'm believing for this thing. But God will cause all things to come together for my good, for the purchase to take place and for me to walk into it without stress, struggle or strain. See, because God wants to give you wisdom along with what it is you believe in for. But don't now use wisdom or use the cover of wisdom to mask a fear to go after greater. Yeah, you, you hear what I'm saying? I hope I'm saying it. You, you know, yeah. Do I need to say it again? OK. OK. In other words, they tell me, yeah, I need to say it again. In other words. You manage where you are while you believe in for where you're going. You walk in good stewardship. Don't overspend because then you bring extra stress, struggle and strain upon yourself that, you know, you can't even handle it at the level that you currently are. You know, it's like somebody that's believing for, you know, they'll come and ask, do you believe I should have the surgery for some, you know, for this, that or the other? Or I'm going to just or should I just believe God for divine healing for just God to do it? I'll tell people nine times out of 10 in those situations, you did 10 times out of 10. Go ahead and have the surgery, but believe God to be with you along the way. I'll ask him, where is your real faith? Because just the fact that you came and asked me already showed me that your faith isn't at that particular level just yet. You're trying to get it to that place. But right now, let's say, OK, let's do this. Can you believe that you will have a surgery, that everything will go smoothly and that you have a speed of recovery? Yeah, I can believe for that. OK, let's go ahead and pray from there. Because some people try to overload their faith. And then all of a sudden, it's a hope deferred making their heart sick. And then it gets them to think that they can't believe God any longer because, hey, this didn't work out. That didn't work out. So now I'm apprehensive about believing God again because I didn't do it properly the last time. You, you see what I'm saying? So God doesn't want you to be injured, but he wants your faith to grow and expand. where well, you can start believing for bigger and for better. See, some of you right now, it'll be hard for you to believe for all of the money to come in to pay cash for a car. But what you could believe for is to go ahead, get approved for the financing, and then believe God to pay the car off early. It's like, okay, my faith is there. And that way you still got a car to drive in the midst of it. You, you see what I'm saying? So you got to meet God where you are. And God meets you where you are. But you want to grow to greater. And I hope I share that a little better. <laughs> Because God wants you to get better and better and better and you not feel bad because you think you should be at one place in life that you're not currently at just yet. Yes, it's in heavenly places, but it ain't manifested yet. Because now you got to be able to handle, honestly, you got to make sure that you check yourself and check your heart. Because it's kind of going into one of the steps. I'm preaching on the steps. And I just haven't told you everything just yet. He wants you to guard your heart and check it so that now a hope deferred won't make your heart sick. And he doesn't want any more hopes deferred. He wants you to be intentional and systematic at what you believe in for and seeing the answers come to pass. That you set your faith to believe for this thing. You lock in on it. You get the word concerning it. You go ahead and believe God for it and say now. So even when you pray, Father, I ask now in the name of Jesus. For a four bedroom, five bedroom home, three plus bath with office with this. OK, your word declares that in Jesus said in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so. I wouldn't have um, told you I go and prepare a place for you. John 14 and two. Whatsoever things I desire when I pray, believe I receive them and I shall have them. God, even Paul said in, in Philippians that you should supply all of my need according to your riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. He says he created all things richly for us. To enjoy. So you created these things for me to enjoy. As your will is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. You have a home for me in heaven. You got one for me here on this earth. Now he gives us wisdom to make the decision as to what we like, what we want. He says this also in old covenant. He says this, we can apply the principle of it. He says that you'll give me houses I didn't build and that you'll fill them with good things. So I use that to even say now, even the furniture, the decor of the home that matches it. And then watch this. You don't want me to live in stress, struggle or strain based off of just my knowledge of your word. You want me to be a good steward over the resources that you've given me. So now I can make the confession that I receive this without stress, struggle or strain. Now, it does not mean there won't be 
um, um, resistance in the spirit realm because Satan, the God, little G of this world, does not want you to have and experience this breakthrough. So there may be situations that come up and all of a sudden now it's coming up. Remember what we talked about on Thursday, stuff that comes up to disturb you, to agitate you, to get you angry, to get you off course so that you can shut down the process of the patience of the I believe I receive it to there it is. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. So the promise is the home. The faith started when you believed you received it, but the patience is the walk that you have until you see that thing manifested. So there may be things that come up, news that happens. Somebody, the, the realtor may come and tell you something, and then the loan officer may tell you something, and it seemed like you just fighting, and you just fighting. One time I had that, I, I just was honest. I gotta be honest. I've been there. I don't know if y'all ever been there. But I asked God something one time. It was like, God, why has this got to be hard? Why do these situations just got to be like this? And you know, the first scripture that rose up in my spirit was the way of the transgressor is hard. I was like, whoa, hold up. So that means, okay, wait a minute, if you're speaking this, where am I off? Where am I transgressing? Am I missing something? Look at your attitude. Listen, just this week, I was preaching on, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. And I was driving and my wife was beside me in the passenger seat. And I was just and I start speaking to myself. She said, what'd you say? I said, I won't be agitated because I kept saying stuff like, man, that irritates me when people was driving in and out. Was people just dodging in and out of traffic. I said, man, that irritates me. And so I realized I kept speaking. I get irritated. I get irritated by this. I get irritated. And the scripture that I had just preached on came back up in me. Remember, don't you let your heart be troubled. Then I start speaking to myself. I'm not going to let it bother me. She said, that's, she said, that's right. I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm going to be peaceful. If they want to dart in, let them go on. I'm not going to trip. And I just had to calm myself down. Why? I had to control my attitude in that midst. Well, what happened? The word came up and captured me because it was sown in me. Even in my preparation to preach, even in my time to study, it came back up. Remember? Don't be agitated. Remember, just because they came with something and they said something does not mean it negated what you prayed. Remember, it's already done, so you got to keep the right attitude. Don't get mad. It is coming to pass. It is working. I'm working on your behalf. All things are working together for your good. It's coming to pass. Don't get agitated. Don't get agitated. Learn how to rejoice. Remember, you got to learn how to have praise and thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks. Don't be anxious for nothing. I know it's been a minute. And now you're getting real antsy. God win. God win. God win. It's already been. It's already been done. So he says, you're asking me when. It's already. Do you believe it was done when you prayed? So it's already done. Thank you, Father. And I know, I know, I know, I know the feelings. I know the feelings, but this is where we work our faith. This is where you grow. This is where you develop. No, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. So whatever got to work out, you might be doing things behind the scene to prepare me for it. Getting me ready to receive it. That's all it is. He says, you already got it, but there's some other things I'm putting in position in place. And when it finally manifests, you going to see. I know Joseph did that. He went through hell. His family betrayed him. He got sold into slavery. Part of his wife lied on him. The baker and the butcher forgot about him when they was in prison. Then all of a sudden now he comes out and watch this. After everything was said and done. He said, I know God brought me this way to put me in position to be second in command of Egypt, to help save the land with the wisdom he placed on me. And God is saying this, don't you dare give up now. You have already gone through some final examinations. You have already passed many tests. This is your time to receive. It's time to go into receiving mode. And say, I receive it, God. Say that right now. Say, I receive it, God. I receive it. I receive the answers. I receive the wisdom. I receive the manifestation. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done in Jesus' name. It's already done. 
It's already done. It's already done. Yeah. Dog, I, I, Lord. I like this. He said, put them in remembrance. We come boldly. He says, put me in remembrance. He says, plead your case. I want to read this. I don't want to, I want to rush over it, but I want to read it. I got about two minutes or so. What does it mean to put God in remembrance? I like it's in um in Isaiah 43. 25 through 26, one of the things he said in verse 26, he said to put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance. Remind me of your merits. Let us plead and argue together. Set forth your case that you may be justified or proved right. What does this mean? It means that as a covenant believer, you can stand before the throne of God when you pray and remind him of his promise. You can lay your case legally before God and plead your case as a lawyer would plead his case before a judge. Whatever you are praying about, find the scripture. We keep saying that. We keep saying that. I keep saying it, and I keep saying it. But I wonder how many people really do it. If, have you really grabbed the scriptures that, that's pertaining to your situation and gone before God with it? And as you stand on God's word and plead your case based on his promises, he goes to work on your behalf. I want to, in Isaiah, I'm, I'm a... Um, probably finish with this Isaiah 38 1 through 6 this is the story of Hezekiah the account of Hezekiah and verses 1 through 6 Isaiah 38 1 through 6 and it says in those days Hezekiah was sick and near death and Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos went to went to him and said to him thus says the Lord set your house in order for you shall die and not live now you know that that's 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 who that's crazy it says, then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. Now, now watch this. Just think about this situation before I continue. He's sick unto death and near death. Then a trusted voice, a trusted prophet, Isaiah, that this dude on point. He comes and says to him, just think about this. God saying to you, set your house in order, you're going to die. Now, he don't want to die. How many of you know that can be very disheartening that God himself sent a representative to tell him, you might as well get your affairs in order. You about to die, boy. Now watch this. Then Hezekiah, he didn't waste time, turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, remember now, O Lord, I pray. How I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And I was, watch this. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. That, that wasn't a long prayer. That was not a long prayer. He just said, Lord, remember, remember. And then watch this. And he wept bitterly. You have a, a bitter cry. Just think of how heart wrenching gut-wrenching that type of cry is a painful cry and he's crying out to God and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying go and tell Hezekiah thus says the Lord the God of David your father I have heard your prayer I have seen your tears surely I will add to your days 15 years I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city. He changed his outcome by his prayer. If, I, if Hezekiah would not have done anything except, watch this, other than, watch this, if he would have just accepted what Isaiah said. Okay. I'm going to set my house on order. Let me call my lawyer. Let me get everybody together. Let me get the documents straight. Let me talk to the family. Let me do all this stuff. He said, wait a minute. Hezekiah didn't accept that. Even though it was going to happen if he did nothing about it. If he didn't do anything, he would have died then. If he didn't step up, but immediately he changed his outcome by going before God and reminding God, you better, he said, put me in remembrance. 
Father, your word says, your word said, I, man, I remember, oh man, there was this woman, a church we used to attend to years ago, woman that died in the service. We weren't there that particular Sunday, but um, Pastor Parson, he began to, he talked about it. And he said, this woman died. I mean, it released her bladder, everything, her bowels, everything right there on the floor, right there in the church. He says, immediately they went into prayer. And I remember him telling this account of, he says, I immediately reminded God of his promises. And he says, we refuse to allow her to die. For your word says, and begin to quote scripture. And all of a sudden, this woman came back to life in that service. Now watch this. When things happen, are you a person who just sits and tolerates it? Or do you have enough strength, enough gumption, spiritual, righteous indignation, strength to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to let life happen to me. I'm going to change this thing. And that's what God is saying. He says, it's time for you to get your fight in you. You come against this stuff when it hits you. Man, I feel that. He said, you come against that thing. In the name of Jesus, I will not allow this to happen any longer. I won't tolerate it in my house. I won't tolerate it in my life. In G I fight for my life now. God, your word declares that wealth and riches are in my house. Your word declares that the seed of the upright is blessed. My seed is blessed. And Satan, I won't let you have now one of them right now. Listen, uh-uh, with long life you satisfy me and show me your salvation. Your word says it, that you came with healing in your wings. Your word says, whatsoever things I shall say, doubt not in my heart, but believe that those things which I say shall come to pass, I shall have. I shall have whatever I say. I abide in you, and I abide in your word, and your word abides in me, and whatever I ask is going to be done unto me. Why? Because your will is my will, and I know it's your will for me to have long life, so I refuse to die before my time. I reject sickness and disease. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that touches my body dies instantly. It can't even come near me. It burns up because of the power of God in me and abiding in me. Why? Because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus lives in me. It overrides the spirit of death. Life overrides death. How can I die when I pour life into me? I refuse the curse. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Sickness is a part of the curse. Spiritual death is a part of the curse. Poverty is a part of the curse. I rebuke it and renounce it in the name of Jesus. You bring it out. Mm -mm. Stop wallowing. Oh, Lord, how we going to make it? Uh-uh, uh-uh. The greater one is in us. His Jehovah's provisions are seen. El should die, the many breasted one is here. All sufficiency is his. I declare it now. From the north, south, east, and the west, provision is coming now in Jesus' name. Over and above. He'll give me more than I can ask or think. And I think big. I thank you, Father, right now. You created all things richly for me to enjoy. You ain't give me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. I have discipline and self-control. I do good to my enemies. I bless them in Jesus' name. They will not get me off kill. They ain't going to get me off into being offended and holding art against them. Uh-uh. I ain't holding nothing against nobody. I release all men out of my heart. Any bitterness, any animosity, I will not allow you to stay here. When the thought of them comes up, I will not be angry. I will not hold their sins against them just like you ain't hold mine against me. In Jesus' name, I work on me. I get better and better. I get stronger and stronger. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. I have excellent excellent relationships. I have excellent health. My mind is alert. I listen. Ooh, I don't know why this word. I come against dementia. You got the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within you. Yeah. Uh-uh. You ain't losing your mind. You got the mind of Christ. The memory of the just is blessed. Stop being afraid. Stop worrying about being decrepit. Uh-uh. 
I know scripture talks about though the outward man perishes, he said the inward man is being renewed day by day. Yeah, you can slow the aging process down in Jesus' name. You younger, you stronger, stop dying. Stop just submitting to it in Jesus' name. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Resist the achiness. Resist the pain. Resist the hurt. Resist the shame. Whatever it is in Jesus' name. Man, somebody, you better hear me. I will not die before my time. With long life, he satisfies me and shows me his salvation. See, you go before God. God, you need me on this earth. I know to be absent from the body is to be present with you. But precious in the, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So listen, to me, listen, to live is Christ in the die's game, Paul said. To live is Christ. You need me here to preach this word, to get as many people born again, to get them trained up in your word. Listen, you don't need me in heaven. You need me here. Glory to God. Listen, I ain't in no rush to go nowhere. I have heaven on earth, and I know I got a mansion waiting on me there. I got an assignment there, and I got an assignment here. And I'm going to fulfill this assignment. I'm going to look good doing it. I'm going to be strong doing it in Jesus' name. You better fight for what's rightfully your Man, glory to God. There's no fight coming back. Don't you just roll over and die. God, who am I? Who? Jesus. You better get ready because here you come. Here you come. Faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Stronger than a locomotive. Lord Jesus, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, boy, you ain't long. Listen, I'm like this. This generation needs me. I need to train up warriors in this earth. I need to train up ambassadors to be released and to let them know their authority and power. I got to train up people. God said, go teach my people who they are. I've allowed you to go through things in your life and I've taught you my word by precept and experience. And it's time to release this glory to God. I said, who Jesus. He said, I want you to release this thing and you go bold and the fire of God will be a consuming fire. It'll be a consuming fire. It'll consume stuff all around you. You walk near people and they get delivered. Why? My power is present. I speak life to you now. I speak life to you now to come out of your grave clothes and walk in power. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whoo. Whoo, Jesus. Who glory. Who glory. Glory to God. Power. Ooh, Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I rejoice in the Lord always. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You better rejoice. Hey, hey, yeah, multiply. He'll multiply. He'll mo just like Jesus blessed the bread and the fish. Multiply blessing. Multiply blessing. You got the power to bless. You got the power to bless. Yeah, he said it's some 30, 60, and 100, but don't settle for the 30 or even the 60. Oh, I like, ooh, I like how Pastor said this one time. Oh, he says, he says if you settle for the 30 fold, that means you just accepted 70 fold defeat. What? What? <laughs> I want it all. You do what you want to do. I want everything he got for me. I want everything. Discipline. Discipline. Discipline breeds consistency. You're going to be disciplined. I'm going to speak it in you. This will be your most disciplined year. And it's going to be, watch this, which will create your most consistent year. In Jesus' name. Steady as she go. We speak life in Jesus name. Intercessors, you hear me. This is what God said. He told me, he says, it's time to intensify your prayers. Intense. I mean intense. Heartfelt, boiling point prayer. The prayers of the righteous avail of much. The, yeah, man, I'm telling you. That don't mean you got to be louder. That just means you just locked in on that thing and you speaking it like you believe it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. 
Don't you accept defeat, not for one split second. Satan hates this type of message. He is defeated. He has no power over us, saints. I don't care what smoke signals he brings up. He, he, listen, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's why it says be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. Your adversary goes about. He preys on people who don't know or understand who they are. So now we begin to teach who you are, how to exercise that authority. But what Satan would try to do is when you just start out trying to exercise it, he'll try to make you think that it ain't working so that you stop it. He's trying to kill your confidence. I declare a refreshing and a reviving of confidence in people now. In Jesus' name, confidence, boldness. You got to be ready because some people who, who are insecure will call you arrogant because of how confident you are and who God made you to be. Don't you let the darkness that's ruling them dim your light. You let it shine. And you bring them up with you. You speak life into them. You tell them who they are. You are already crowned. His loving kindness and tender mercies. They are new every morning. New mercies God give me. Lord Jesus, favor and mercy on you. Grace and mercy on you. Favor, I'm telling you, Lord, I hear that. Favor on you like never before. Favor, favor pays for stuff money can't do. Favor will put people in position. Favor will remove one and put another right there to say yes to you and to help expedite it. Favor now in Jesus, whoa, Lord, the force of favor, the force of favor, receive it, the force of favor, the force of favor. Mm. I'm expecting unusual outcomes for you now. Well, stuff is like they, ch they just changed the rules before you came. And it qualified you for stuff qualifications your education paid for man all of it paid for whatever is needed the money is there there have been wicked men and women who have held up money for for years that's about to be released the cry what is it out of the book of james the cries of the people have entered into the lord of Seboa. The cry of the people, the cries of the people and the injustices that have been done are being eradicated. You better hear what's getting ready to hit. There and people are irritated who have controlled and manipulated systems for years and generations. There is a complete upheaval going on. It's going to be, listen. For those in the earth, in the world, it'll be an upheaval. But those who walk by faith, we're going to live in Goshen. We're going to live in light. We're going to see God. We're going to see transformation and change. We're going to see transfers. We're going to see things, acquisitions. I'm talking about there's a rise in the people of God like you've never seen before. It's almost like a switching. We, we preached it. Those that are last shall be first. Though it, th this is a new remnant. This is a new generation. This is a new time coming. These are people who have been believing. And some of you have been sitting on your gift. God says it's time to just maximize it. Whatever you can do to maximize it. Just, just begin to do it. Begin to do it. Begin to do it. Begin to do it. What's your love? What causes you to come alive? Begin to do it. God will give you wisdom. Show you how to structure it. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessing, blessing on you in Jesus, man, Jesus' name. I need to stop. I need to stop. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you that the blessing is on us. It maketh rich and you add no sorrow. 
Thank you that you died. Jesus, you sent your son Jesus to die for the sins of mankind. We give you glory for that. Now, Father, we pray for those that are not born again, never accepted Jesus as the Lord of their life. Let them know there's a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And maybe somebody that you just brought along to hear this today. Glory to God. Let them know there is a no soul salvation. If they don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they were to die today, they'd make it to heaven. They want to know. They want to know. Be confident and be sure. We ask that you begin to speak to their hearts, minister to them. Not only to become born again, but to receive your spirit, your power to abide and live and dwell on the inside of them. Now, for those that are under the sound of my voice, I want you, for those that are never giving your life to the Lord, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I just want you to do so with us. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thank you, Lord. I hear that. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you because I've made Jesus my Lord and I belong only to him. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life in Jesus' name. Now, thank you. Why should I say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. Abide in me. Dwell in me. Live in me. I yield myself to you. And I declare that I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Out of your belly flows the rivers. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We believe, Father. We thank you. We're excited and we give you praise for those that are born again, filled with your spirit, and they have eternal life. Listen, we're excited for you. Amen. We're excited for you. We're excited for you. Glory to God. We rejoice with you at the decision that you made to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Now we recommend. Now the last invitation for, for those, for whether you call it church membership, we'll, we like to call partnership as well, to partner with this ministry. We believe that when God calls you to a particular place, he calls you to use your gifts, talents, and abilities to help assist in fulfilling his global mandate, but also the local mandate that he has for that body of believers. Listen, you need to get to a church home, a place where you can get the word of God, receive the word of God, be disciple, trained in the things of God, and have the sense of family, community, and we recommend this ministry to you. If you don't have a church home, make the decision. You know, I know sometimes it can be for different reasons, like, well, you know, I don't know yet. I love the word, but this, that, or the other. Maybe God has called you to help solve some of those issues or whatever. Get to the place God called you to be. That, that's vitally important, man. That's vitally important. Get to the place. Be in his will for your life. I'm like this. If this is not the place he called you to be, get to the place he called you to be. I want you in the will of God, and I want you happy. I want you receiving what it is you're supposed to get from God, man. But if this is the place God has already laid on your heart to do that, listen, we want to receive you. There's some information coming up on your screen. You can send us an email if you desire. You can send us a message on our social media platforms and say, hey, if you need to find out more about the ministry, you can go to our website at spiritofire.us, spiritofire.us, or you can send us an email. We'll have somebody from our Connect team to get in contact with you. And we are believing, we are believing for 300 new partners. That's what I said. I just put out there this year, 300. It's like, it can happen. I don't care what hasn't happened in the past. We believe for greater. I just said 300 new this year. Let's believe for it together. Why don't you be a part of that number? Be a part of the will of God being manifested. Join this local fellowship. 
that God is also, we're enhancing not only our in-person, but also our virtual, our e-campus, virtual experience for people that are not locally here with us, but you want to connect, whether global, you, you know, domestic or abroad, we want you to be a part of this work. We want to be a blessing to you. God has spoken to my heart even this year about digital discipleship and really working on things and projects to really get the word out to people, to train and to teach them in the word of God, to help you build a strong foundation in your faith. You know, from things of dealing with prayer, your spiritual life, you walk the grace of God, understanding who the Holy Spirit is, how he functions in our lives, the gifts of the spirit, all of those things, how to pray, understanding church protocol, all that kind of stuff. You want to just what God says in his word as to how we're to function. I'm believing just for kingdom expansion like never before, where we are showing the people in the earth how we function, how we roll as believers. This is how we're supposed to do. God wants you blessed, man. He wants you functioning at optimum level. He wants you to dominate. Yeah, man. But some people's like, man. And sometimes I know this life can seem overwhelming. But we want to help you step by step begin to grow and develop so you can become bold and confident in what you believe and who you believe in. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. Um, as the information is coming up on your screen, there's the different methods in which you can sow and you can plant. I think it's vitally important to understand that as you receive and you sow and you give, it's important to, to give. It's important to show reciprocity. This is how we honor God. This is how God supports his work is through the giving of his people. And so now we understand that as we give, it's given to us again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That God will cause men to give unto our bosom. And so even as we sown and we believe, we are a giving church, we're sowing church, and we believe in the harvest that's supposed to come as a result of it. So listen, even as you sow and even as you give, expect return, expect the hundredfold return. We pray for a hundredfold return. God's multiplied blessing upon you and your household as you give, but do it in faith. I'm, I'll be teaching um, soon on that subject of giving, but I want to just, as, a, as God has instructed me, I needed to start with prayer and start dealing with prayer and how to pray and how to go before God and how to be bold in your faith and bold in going before him and expecting answers to your prayers. Listen, this is important. Your support is vital to us getting this gospel out and to do it in an excellent way. There'll be times where even with God um, talking about this, he said he spoke to me years ago, says build locally, but think globally. And so we got to think about global expansion and then the equipment and the volunteers and the staff that's needed to get it done. Listen, this vision shall come to pass. There's much we're going to be sharing that God is laying on our hearts, things that he's spoken unto us years ago, and it's time to, to put the things in motion, to see this stuff come to pass. Even at this time, we're believing, one of the first faith projects we're believing for this year is our new truck for the ministry, so we can um, do mobile ministry, outreaches, things of that nature. And so at this time, uh, I think they're bringing up the picture. And so... The instruction that I believe I got for right now is just to get the people to believe with you right now. I'm not even asking about sowing towards it just yet. This is the first part. And I want you to do this with me. I want you to go ahead and stretch your hands towards that picture. And I want you to declare this, say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new box truck paid for in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to believe we receive it. We'll be looking around, doing some things, and just kind of taking it step by step. That's one of the things. Also, we're believing for even our new facilities to worship in. And so I want us to say this as well. Those are the two major things of just praying over this year. So far as major projects, there's some other things we'll be working on. But I want you to say this also. We're going to set this in motion. Just say this. Say, we believe. We receive our new facilities now, paid for in Jesus' name. Amen. That paid for just in me. Listen, we come from we come from good stock. We come from faith stock. We come from places where, listen, <clears throat> domes have been built, 18 million paid for. We come from debt freedom. We surrounded by faith. We surrounded by I'm just I'm just going, I'm just being straight up, man. We 
We got to draw on this stuff. We got to draw on the legacy of faith that we have. And the words, there are many of you connected even with this ministry. It's like, man, you've been taught the word. Many of you got Bibles highlighted. You got books galore, notebooks full of the word, tapes, CDs, DVDs, all of that. But it's like, wait a minute. To the level I've heard and received, I haven't begun to see to the degree. One of the things is you got to begin to renew your mind first. Your spirit is already alive unto God when you're born again. Well, you got to renew your mind now to begin to take you to that place. Begin to get the image as to where you want to go. And do it like this reverse engineer. God will begin to give you the steps to build. Ask, ask God, give me the dreams again. Help me to dream again, to see again, to think and believe bigger again. You don't have to wait just for your, you know, as you get older, you ain't got to wait for your children to take care of you. You can take care of God to take care of you. Now your children would do it, but it's like, trust God, believe God. You ain't got to wait for the government to take care of you. God to take care of you. We got to believe that, folks. I said, I'm going to say, we got to believe it again. Some stuff I haven't heard preached to the degree that it used to be because there was such backlash from the fact that God wants you wealthy. He wants you rich, abundantly provided for, abundant provision. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. This younger generation needs to begin to take on that mantle and begin to declare the provision of God like you've never seen. Walking in a level of dominance in this earth to secure kingdoms in this earth. Secure mountains of in. I'll get into that later. I ain't gonna. As the Lord get whatever He tells you to do, do it. As He tells you to sow, just obey the Spirit of God. The information is on your screen. You can scan the QR code. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow and you can plant and you can give. And as you do so, we're in agreement with you for increase, for return, maximize profit in your life. Glory to God. Every need met, every bill paid in full. In Jesus' name, you don't know man anything but the love. You'll see to meet your every need. God is leading you to sow on behalf of loved ones, family members, something that you need to get accomplished and done. He'll give you his word and he'll give you an opportunity to sow. He'll give you word seed and also financial seed to sow. The law of double seed, I like to call it. The word and resources that he gives you to sow in the plant. And God says this, there's nothing that's going to be withheld from you. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message, but before I do so, I want to give the final blessing and benediction. I declare God's best and greatest and brightest upon you in Jesus' name. And with long life, he satisfies you and shows you his salvation. May you live long. May you live strong. Praise God. Even we hear that we are changing the culture, igniting a passion, living a dream. As we are bringing them in, raising them up, and sending them out. In Jesus' name. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.